Yeah, these lessons, these first two lessons are not that bad. Yeah, and and there's a lot of repetition that you can do with these kind of problems because they go very fast. It's not like a factoring problem where it takes five minutes. These problems take like a minute. Uh, so it's, it's radical. Um, so today we're going to be going over what exactly is a root and a radical, and then we're going to be going over how to multiply and simplify those things. Um, Big surprise, the class after that, we're going to learn how to divide them. Oh, I forgot about my folder. My folder. <laughs> Are you going to get one to grading so I... <laughs> Maybe. I'm asking for weeks. Oh, really? That's no. priceless. I'm so far behind. <laughs> I was like, oh, we don't have much time left. Yes, I will. I will. After the okay. semester is over, I'm going to do the math all day. All right. Wow. Let's not go over this again. All right, so, <laughs> all right, so um, we're going to go over square roots, square numbers, things like that. Um, the number, our definition of a square root basically says some number C is a square root of a number A if C squared is equal to A. <clears throat> the radical sign, that's what this little guy is called, is used to indicate the square root. Um, <clears throat> just a real quick recall, right? Remember that the number 3 is a root of 9, so is the number negative 3. And so and when we ask to find it, when I say give me the square root of 9, I'm talking about the positive version of that. That's what we call the principal root, right? So when I say square root of 9, you could say plus or minus 3, and that would be completely correct. But if you just said plus 3, that would be okay too. Right, and that's just you know, unless I'm asking for the principal root, or unless like the problem demands that you have the plus and minus in there. All right, so um, <clears throat> like this problem, it asked me to find the square roots, both of them. So what are the square roots of forty-nine plus and minus seven? All right, what about these ones? What is the square root of two hundred and twenty-five? Well, you better get it. <laughs> 15. 15. All right. 15. What's the square root of 64? 8. Good. Now, notice real quick, there's a negative sign out front, and so that just stays out front. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, yeah. like I said, this stuff, it's not too bad at this point. Uh, it gets a little bit weird in the next section, but we'll slow down for that. <clears throat> All right, so a radical, <laughs> a radical expression is an expression uh, with at least one radical sign. The radicand in a radical expression is the expression under the radical sign. Right? And so in this first example, they asked me to identify the radicand so for this one, the radicand is x. For this one, the radicand is y squared minus 5. Yeah, the radicand is not 3 because that's not underneath the square root. In this example where I have root x minus 1, the radicand is just x. It's not the minus 1 because the minus 1 is not under the square root. Oh, okay. Okay, so uh, it helps to recall. Uh -huh. Oh, okay. Um, so, since we're going over the basics here, I know we just went over this, but remember, the square of uh, any real number is positive, right? So the square of negative numbers is still positive. Also, it helps to recall that numbers like this are not real numbers. Whenever you have a negative constant number under here, it's not real, right? That means, you know, because, because we're saying, what's the square root of 25, negative 25? So they're saying, what two numbers do we multiply together to get a negative 25? Well, in the real valued numbers, there is none that do that. Gabe? So because it's not a real number, it's not a number? That's exactly what it means, yeah. Uh, yeah, this splits up into what are called imaginary roots with the right. number i. The number i. The number I. It is a number, I know. Yeah. It's just like the number pi is a number, yeah. right? Even though pi is also a letter. The number I is equal to the square root of negative one. No. Right? But that's for another class. 
I'm not going to test you on any of that this year. <laughs> it just helps to realize that these, you know, when you come up with this in your problem, there's no solutions to that at this point. Um, what about this one? Is this number real? Is this defined? Yes. No. No, it's a negative. You're both right. Oh. Wow. It's. What? I like that enthusiasm, Bella. Yes. Okay. So, so what I mean by that is this is only defined depending on the value of x, right? If x is a positive number, if x equals five, this is undefined. If x equals negative five, the two negatives cancel each other out, and this positive. is defined. Yeah. And so when you have a variable underneath the radical sign, uh, just because there's a negative out front doesn't mean it's undefined. It depends on what x is. Okay. All righty. Irrational numbers. So, irrational numbers, some of my favorites, uh, these numbers cannot be represented as a ratio of integers. Um, things like the number pi, right? That's a famous irrational number. It cannot be represented as a fraction of two whole numbers. Uh, the square root of two, this is a square root that is irrational. That's because the number two is not a perfect square. The square root of 9, though, is not irrational because 9 has a whole number value, right? 9 equals 3, and 3 is rational. So the whole thing is rational. <clears throat> and so this leads us to a basic rule. Uh, the rule says the square root of any whole number is irrational unless that whole number is a perfect square, okay? And so the number 15, that's not a perfect square. If we had the square root of 15, this would be irrational, right? What about uh, 21? 21 is not a perfect square, so the square root of 21 is irrational. But 16, that's a perfect square. The square root of 16 is equal to 4, and that is rational. Okay, and so this little picture here, I have these numbers listed. I have 25 in two. Yeah, and so the... Because like five, five times five, five is twenty-five. Yeah. Four times four. Yeah, and so so take a, take a look here, right? That makes sense. Three times three is nine. I get it. Yeah, and so you can build. Yeah, you can build the perfect squares by just squaring all the counting numbers, right? Why did so you say that last one. I did. You just weren't listening. So <laughs> so if you square one, right, you get one. If you square two, you get four. If you square three, you get nine, right? Square four, square five, right? You can see you can build out the squares by just squaring the count. So the numbers. next one would be thirty-six. Yeah, thirty-six would be the next perfect square. Okay. So yeah. Hold on, let's not divert quite yet. Let me finish this. So <laughs> before we go off topic, so notice all these numbers in red. All these numbers except for the ones we just highlighted for perfect squares. These are all irrational. All of, them. All of them. No matter what, unless you have a perfect square underneath this, it's an irrational number. You can simplify it a little bit, but the, the end result will be irrational. Gabe, sorry to interrupt you. Go ahead. All right. So you and me went over this like a while back ago, I was like last year. Uh huh. But do perfect squares have something in common with perfect numbers? Um. <clears throat> I don't know. Probably. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's it's a it's a it's a tangent. Uh, yeah. That's why I said I went off. It's a little off. I mean, I would think they're both such basic kind of entities. There's no real connection. Like you could find one, but it'd be arbitrary. Um, okay. So what if we were asked to classify these numbers as rational, irrational, or what? What's this first one? Irrational. Why is that? Because it doesn't go into itself. Because yeah, because the radicand is not a perfect square. If you want to say it in mathy terms, but yeah, that's correct. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> By the way, mathy. That's a math term. <laughs> twenty-five. Exactly. They just said twenty-five is rational, though. Why? Because it goes by five. Yeah, because it equals five, and five is a rational number. So no problem. See, it's rational because the negative is on the outside, right? Good. Yeah, exactly, right? This is just negative three. Negative three is rational. Okay, what about, what about this? Is this rational? No, it's irrational. Oh. It's rational, right? 
It's rational. It's rational. It's rational. And don't worry, I threw that out there to confuse you guys. So, no, it's rational. Right, because the square root of 1 is equal to 1, which is rational. It's equal to 1 over 1. Yeah. No, this is one that I put in there to mess with people sometimes. Okay, so um, for the next example, let's go over how to use your calculators to compute square root of 10. So if you guys have a similar calculator to me, maybe you do, maybe you don't. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so for me, I just noticed that I just noticed I just noticed that my square root symbol is right up here. If you guys can see, it's in a little blue symbol right up above the number. So you have to press the second button. Exactly. So I have to push this button first and then type in square root ten. <clears throat> All right. This is what it looks like on my screen when I do that. Right? It says root 10. I could close out these brackets over here, but I don't necessarily have to for this one. Yours doesn't have the brackets? No. Let's take a look. Oh, that's weird. Oh, nice. So your, your brackets are the extension of the root across the top. Yours is just a newer version than mine. So yours just kind of looks that's more official. Uh, yeah, no, that's more like a, a correct notation. This is not correct notation, okay. right? Um, so what you could also do, and you can do this on yours too, Deja. Um, I don't know if you guys can see this, but I wrote, I wrote a whole thing inside the parentheses up here, and I calculated it all at once, right? And so this is what I put down there. I put the square root, and then in parentheses, 10 minus 22 times a negative 5. And then I closed it off with parentheses, and I calculated it all at once. And so for you, the parentheses probably don't even need them. You might just well, have them. So let's see. Now. We have 10 is a minus 5. I don't think you do. There it is. So how you close off this square root is going to get the over button. Okay. Yeah, and so, yeah, for, um, so Deja's had an interesting little thing where uh, instead of the brackets, it just gave us an extended square root, and you, like, type stuff in here, and basically when you finish, when you want to close off your square root, you hit the right button. Yeah, you hit the over button, and it'll close it off for you. All right, so that's our quick calculator lesson. <laughs> Hopefully that helped. <clears throat> uh, if you're not sure how to use a square root function, figure it out because there's, there's plenty of evaluation problems in these next few chapters. Okay, I'm going to keep repeating this point. <laughs> Recall that the square of any number is positive. <clears throat> okay, so this means that, right, 5 squared, the square root of 5 squared is 5. Does that make sense for you guys? Yeah. And so, you know, 5 squared is equal to 25. Yeah. The square root of 25 is 5, so 5 squared equals 5. Also, negative five, the square root of negative 5 squared equals 5. five. Yeah, so both of those five. end up being the same number. Wow. And so essentially, right, essentially when we use these two operations together, the square root and the square, it's the same as um, when we positive. perform both of those. Yeah, it just spits out the positive version of whatever number we're dealing with. So for any real number A, the square root of a squared is equivalent to saying, give me the absolute value of that number a. You guys remember what absolute value was? It's okay if you don't. Remember, absolute value is the distance from zero that the number is, right? So, yeah, you do it a little so the absolute value of negative eight is eight. The absolute value of eight is eight. Right? The absolute value just spits out the positive, yeah, it just spits out the positive version. Just measures the distance from zero on the number line. Okay, so let's use that fact. <clears throat> All right, so we have 3x squared, and we're taking the square root of that. There we go, 3x, that's it. Okay, so um, on these next ones, we're just going to simplify all these expressions, uh, and we're going to assume that the variables represent non-negative numbers, and that way we can avoid any weirdness. So, remember, all I do is I pop out what's in the middle, right? Whatever's squared and, and has the square root taken of it, that just comes right out on the other side. So 8x, boom, comes out. 
for this one here. Just because it's a sum doesn't mean it works any different. So the sum pops out, t plus 2. Okay? Any questions on those? Right? If I had something like x squared plus 5x minus 3 squared, and I took the square root of that. Sorry, I should be putting absolute values around these. Uh, and I took the square root of that. I would have the absolute value of, whoops, x squared plus 5x minus 3. Exactly. Oh, okay. All right? Sense. Yeah, it's just whatever is inside that square, whatever's oh, in okay. the brackets, that just pops right out. <clears throat> All righty. Aha. So here is the problem solving problems that you'll run into in this section. It's just a simple evaluation problem. It's not that bad, right? And so this is a function that tells us about parking spaces. Um, hmm. This, <laughs> the attendance at a down lot, downtown parking lot use spaces to leave cars before they are taken to long-term parking stalls. The required number n of such spaces is approximated by the below formula, n equals 2.5 times the square root of a where A is the average number of arrivals in peak hours. Find the number of spaces needed when an average of 43 cars arrive during peak hours. So, so the A exactly, and that's it. And then you calculate, so N equals 2.5 times the square root of 43. So I'm just gonna punch that out on my calculator. So, 2.5 times Square root of 43. What'd you guys get? Kevin. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Excellent. 16.39. And I make sure to use the wavy equal sign because this means approximate, mm -hmm. not exact. Okay. So what if what if the average number of cars arriving per hour is 35? Then what would our value be? Wait, what was it? 35. 35. 14.79. All right. All right. Oops, that's not the one. 14.79. Do you want it rounded up to like 15? Um, like, prop, like, I would say, I would say just if you're not sure, just round it to decimal places. You know, I, I'm only a stakeholder for rounding if I give you specific instructions, you know. I wouldn't round to the whole numbers place because that, that's really far off, you know. Like, I would definitely just round to two decimals out, and that's fine with me. Okay, so that's it. Like, you know, a lot of these problems are going to give you... This will definitely be on the next exam because it's an evaluation problem, and we always have one. Remember, it's just plug and play. <clears throat> Yeah. Fifteen problems this time, right? I don't, so I don't like to have two of those because somebody always gets them wrong, and I'm like, I, I'm like, you know, that's like terrible to get two full letter grades off because you couldn't evaluate. But that's why I thought you're doing more problems for the next. Yeah. I am, maybe. <laughs> next semester. <laughs> All right, so let's move on. 8.2, we're going over multiplication of square roots, how to do that, how to simplify them. Uh, so we have a product rule for square roots, and this basically says if you have two square roots multiplied together, you can join them under one larger square root. So, <laughs> so, um, hmm doesn't say to simplify these yet. Okay, so we won't simplify these yet, um, but I can combine these under the same square root. So five times seven. Right, five times seven, and then 35, and that's it. And so if we saw a square root of nine and a square root of 8, it would be the same thing. So that's a little bit different because because the square root of 9, oh, because it's three times three, three. yeah, um, and so, no, actually, I, I think you would, and that's because um, because there's a larger square you can pull out of this. Yeah. Wait, you can, what do you mean? Uh, we haven't gone over simplification later yet, 
But when we do, you'll understand what I mean. Um, and so like, you know, yes, we could write this as three roots eight and just call it a day. Yeah. But if we combine those two together, we can actually pull a larger number out here in front. Um, and actually, we, we could do that right, right now if you guys really want to see how that works, because yeah. we're going to do it in a second anyway. So what I'd do is I'd say, OK, I have eight. Eight is a combination of two factors. One of those factors is a perfect square. That number is four. So I break that perfect square off. And so eight turns into four times two. And so I use, I use this again, right? I, and I'm actually using this product rule in reverse now. Right? And so I say, OK, now I have 3 times root 4 times root 2. We know what root 4 is equal to. It's equal to 2. So I have 3 times 2 times root 2. And in the end, it's 6 times root 2. And so I started off up here, and I said, I think I can factor this out a little bit. I factored out a perfect square from that number, which allowed me to pull that off and simplify it into a 2. All right, if that's super confusing, don't worry, we're going to do a bunch of those. We just jumped a little bit ahead. We probably shouldn't have. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> so with this one, right, um, right, root 6 times root 6. Obviously, if we extend the square root, this is 6 times 6, which is 36. The square root is 6. You okay? <laughs> um, <clears throat> all right, for two fractions, uh, we do the same thing. We extend the square root over the entire multiplication. And so for this one, we now have 2 thirds times 7 over 5. All right, uh, now we do the fractional multiplication within the radical. And so we go straight across the top and straight across the bottom. This gives us 14 over 15. And that's it. Okay, we're going to do the same thing here. Combine these guys under one radical, 2x times 3y, that equals the root of 6xy. And that's it. <clears throat> okay, so now, I believe now we're going to talk about simplification a little more. So what you guys might have noticed, what I did on that um, problem when we sort of simplified things a little bit further, is I reversed our product rule. So I had something that started out under one radical sign, and I split it into two. So we're, we're allowed to do that, and that's how we simplify these a little bit. So notice here I have the square root of 50. Right? In the next step, I break that down into its factors, 25 and 2. I broke it down into 25 and 2 because 25 is a perfect square number. If it wasn't, this whole thing would be worthless. So after this step, you can see I break it down into two different square roots, and then I convert the root 25 into 5. This whole thing is equal to 5 roots 2. And so the square root of 50 is equivalent to 5 roots 2. If you calculate it on your calculator, it's the exact same. And, and that's how you can check your work on these, right? Calculate this, calculate this, make sure it's the same number. If it's not, something went wrong. <clears throat> Okay, so what do we mean by a simplified form of a square root? Uh, well, a square root is simplified when its radicand has no factor other than one that is a perfect square, right? And so if I say the square root of five, right, the only factors of five are five and one. Neither of these is a perfect square, right? So it's just five. Yeah, so five is where it has to stay, yeah. However... Okay, so now let's just do some examples. So 18, 18 splits up, you know, it could split up into 6 and 3, but neither of those is a perfect square number, right? But it does split up into 9 and 2. 9 is a perfect square number, so I'm going to use those. I have 9, I have 2, then I split up the roots, root 9, root 2, root two and then I go ahead and I simplify that 9 into a 3. Whoops. Oops, three roots two. Three roots two. And that's how we that's how you typically say that. Three roots two. Four roots five. You know. You don't have to though. Six roots. <laughs> um, so if you're not exactly sure how to split up that 18, which is this is common with larger numbers, right? If you're not sure how to split up that 18 so you get a perfect square, you can do a factor tree on it. I know you guys love those. So 18 splits up into 6 and 3. 3 is prime, so it comes straight down. 
I write out the factors of 6, which is 2 and 3. And then I notice in my prime factorization, I have a pair of 3s. So that can be pulled out to the front. Yeah, pairs. If you have pairs in your prime factorization, they can be pulled out. And then it will be root 2. Right, because the two left. Yeah, have a pair. it will be. Yeah, it will be three roots two. Cause right. Yeah, because we had a pair of threes, so we were allowed to pull one of those out, and we had the two left because it was kind of and flying you solo. What's that? Yeah, you'd end up with the same way. Yeah, factor three doesn't matter how you do. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so this one. <laughs> So this guy here, when we have variables under the root, it works roughly the same way, right? We were allowed to pull, we were allowed to simplify the nine because it was three squared. So well, right we here, out yeah, we have a squared. So, so a squared times b. So we, we break it up, right, into its two factors, a squared times the square root of b. Now I can do it again. Not again, but we but remember, forward, right? remember, there's two of them. The square root of a number squared is just that number. So, then just so a. a can come forward, right? Yeah, so a gets pulled out. We have an a out front. There's nothing to do with the b, yeah. b just stays. Wow. Yeah, Voila. exactly. Right? And you can see that works so well only if we have, right, that worked on the a because we had an even number up there. It didn't work on the b because that's an odd number, uh -huh. right? These are just squares. Yeah. <laughs> flying solo. Flying solo. <laughs> He's like birds. Wow. You didn't hear me say just like heaven. We got A's out there in the air. I did not say that first. <laughs> <laughs> it's recording proof. <laughs> okay. All right. So uh, the 196, I'm not exactly sure how 196 breaks up. Does it, Can anybody see a divisor of 196 that's a perfect square? Yeah. <laughs> 14. 14? It's not a perfect square, but, but perfect square. 14 times what? Oh, it doesn't have an even square, does it? No. Okay. Oh. It does. Well, 14 squared is 196. Yeah. Yeah. So the actual number is a perfect square. Oh, I'm sorry. I was going to try and do a factor tree and like, you know, break it all down, but yeah, it has an even square root, so we don't even need to worry about all that. So, <laughs> so I'm going to rewrite these. Right? My 196, I'm going to write that as 14 squared. And then I have my t squared. Right? I'm going to break that off. That's going to that's going to get pulled out. And then I have my u. Okay. Yep. 14t square root u. Root u. That's it? Exactly, that's it. How? All right. Evaluation. So, suppose they want you to evaluate for this. They yeah, don't. This is actually a this is actually a very common evaluation. And next year and the year after that, you will be doing this calculation probably a hundred times. That's part of the uh, that's part of the quadratic equation. Yeah. Yep. It's all about the quadratic. So yeah, this is something you'll be evaluating all the time. <laughs> okay. So all I do to evaluate is fill in the blanks for the variables. So I have b equals six. So this is six squared minus 4 times a and c. a is 3. 4 times 3 times negative 5. Okay. So, I'm going to take this one step at a time. So I have 36. After I do this multiplication, I notice that I have two negatives here. I have a negative on the 5. Exactly. And a negative on the 4. So that gives me a plus 4 times 3 times 5. 60. Nice job. 60, all right, and so that gives me the square root of 96? No, 102. 102, sorry. Pow. <laughs> Pow. <laughs> 102? No, it's 96. <laughs> you see how easy I just went with that? <laughs> Dude, I was like, I was 60, 60. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's 
23. That's the square root of 96. So I'm going to punch the 96 in to make sure it's not an even square. It's not. <laughs> so I'm going to make a factor tree and we're going to, oh, actually, no, they ask us to evaluate this evaluate. one. So we don't actually have to simplify it, right? When they ask you, you to, leave it just like that? when they, um, when they ask you to evaluate, you Break typically, um, you typically give an estimation or an approximation. This would be fine. I would completely accept that. Or if you wanted to calculate the square root of 96, 9. I would accept 7, that too. 9. Roughly 9.7, 9.7, 9. oh, oh, 9.8, 9.8, oh, I think, yeah. <clears throat> um, yeah, so I'd accept either of those answers. And even if you round it a little off, I don't really care. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay. All right, so let's really dig into this whole like taking square roots of powers thing a little bit more. Um, so, <laughs> so remember, we found out last time that taking square roots of even powers is sort of easy in a way. Uh, and, and this is how, right? We want to take this even power and rewrite it in terms of squares. So uh, x to the 10th, I can rewrite that as x to the 5th squared. Right? Yeah. yeah, and so now I have one of those situations where I have something inside that is squared and we take the square root of, so that's what pops right out. So that could be x. x to the fifth. Darn it, I broke my tip. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so notice real quick, 5 is 1 half of 10. That's, that's the rule. When it comes to even exponents underneath radicals, you cut it in half. That's it. Right? Yeah. I mean, you know, uh, <laughs> I'm going to want you to probably show something like this. So, you know, like, remember why we're doing that. But you can't. Can. I mean, you can yeah. do x10 and do x5. It'll be fine. <laughs> It'd be fine. Um, okay. So now, how do we handle it if it's, a, it's an odd power? So we just have one extra step if there are odd powers. We split it up into an even, then an odd power. So we rewrite this as x to the 10th times x to the 1, right? And then we simplify the x to the 10, and we leave the x to the 1 there, right? So that's it. When it's an odd number, what comes out front is like that number minus 1 cut in half. That's it. We just split them, split them up so that one's even, one's odd, and simplify them like that. All right, so if they tell us to simplify these guys, I notice this has an even exponent, so I'm going to write it in terms of squares. Exactly, x cubed squared, and x cubed pops out. p to the 12th, I can write this as the square root of, good, p to the 6th squared. p to the 6th pops out. z to the 22. Yeah, z to the 11. We rewrite it as z to the 11. Where? There we go. Now odd powers, right? We have a nine here. Classic mistake, right? And I even have a note. I even have a note for you at the bottom here, Kevin. <laughs> no, that's like that's one, because your brain is so used to seeing that nine and seeing the square root. You want to say three. Fight that urge, right? You got to break it apart. So this splits up into x to the eighth times a single x, right? When you multiply them together, still x to the nine. Now we have an even number in front here, and so that we get an x to the fourth that pulls out, right? Because we had an eight here, we take half of that, we get x to the four, and then our last x is still just hanging out there. And so no matter what, if you have an odd power, this will be in your problem. No matter what, if you got an odd power, this is never going to simplify. You're always going to have that solo variable hanging out there. <clears throat> Note. Note. <laughs> Square root of x to the ninth is not x cubed. That should have been that. Resist the <laughs> urge. <laughs> Resist. All right. So, um, how about this guy? So this guy contains, um, you know, both numbers and variables. So I'm going to simplify everything. All right, so let's see now. First, I'm going to figure out what I want to turn my 32 into. 16. Right, 32 is equal to 16 times 2. Yeah. So we're going to want to break it up like that. So I have 16 
multiplied by 2. Now I'm going to split up my p. My p turns into p to the 18th. And p Yeah, and then that solo p to the 1. All right, the two things that I'm going to simplify on this next step are this guy and this guy. And then those are just going to get multiplied by the square root of 2p. So 16, the square root of 16 is 4. The square root of p to the 18 is p to the 9th. And then I have left 2p. Yeah, don't forget this other 2. Right? You combine those at the end, right? The way that I break them up, they're always sort of split up in the end. So um, other people kind of like to break them up differently. So go with whatever works. Note. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so remember, when we're multiplying, um, like, you know, we just went over how to simplify and how to multiply, just like fractions, we always want to simplify as much as possible at the end. Sometimes you can't really simplify it too much until you multiply it out first. So with this one, this turns into the square root of 2 times 14, which ends up as root 28. <laughs> right? Root 28, does that have a perfect square involved? <laughs> <laughs> that 14. Wow. 14 and 2, yeah. right? Okay, but 14 and 2 are not. Oh, yeah. Right? But hold on, we have 2. Is there a factor of 2 involved in 14? Yeah. Seven yeah. So there's got to be a 4 in there somewhere, right? 4 times 7 equals 28, and 4 is a perfect number. Right? right? If, if you're confused, you know, if you didn't, weren't sure as how to break this up, you do a factor tree and circle some pairs. No big deal. All right, so um, the root 28, that splits up into, oops, root 4 times root 7. And this turns into 2 roots 7. All right, same thing with this guy. Um, when we multiply this out, we have 5 times 6. That gives us 30. Uh, t times t gives us t squared. So now I'm going to go ahead and split up 30. 30 splits up into 5 and 6. 5 and 6. 6 is 3 times. No, there's no perfect square in 30. And here, let's let's do the factor tree just to make absolute and sure. Three. 3 and 10. 3 is prime, so it comes straight down. 2 and 5. 2 and 5. No right? There are no pairs in here. So there's nothing to be done with 30. All we can do is pull out the t squared. Pull out the t, I should say. Mm -hmm. yeah. Simplify the t squared. So, so 30. t roots 30. Yeah. There we go. That's it. That's it. All right. So this guy here, right, we put these under one radical, end of the two, end of the three. That gives us root end of the five. five. This is an odd, so we're going to so split it up. Down end four, end one. Exactly. End of the four times solo n. End of the 4, we cut it in half. We get n squared times root n. Okay, I think this is the yeah, last one. So, for this guy here, you guys should try this one. <laughs> no, no. Um, yeah, you guys try this out. This is the last one of the day. Don't worry, I won't like come check your papers or anything. Give yourself a couple minutes to try and do this. Here, I'll back it up so you can see what we did on the last problem.
Give it, give it another minute or so. And it more. Yeah, that's kind of cool. Because you like the yeah, you automatic. Use straight lines. Straight lines. I did put in the corner. Don't get spoiled, guys. This isn't. <laughs> that's a perfect line, movie. <laughs> All right, guys. So let's go ahead and handle this. Um, so for this, before I even multiply these two coefficients together, I just noticed real quick that one's prime and the other one's a perfect square already. So I'm just gonna leave them separated. Uh, so I'm gonna say this turns into root nine yeah. times a root, <laughs> we'll just say root two over here, and then I'll combine all my x's. So I had x cubed times x to the eight. That gives me x to the 11 total. All right, so now I'm going to split up that x to the 11. Yep, I'm going to go ahead and uh, rewrite this root 9 as 3. So I have 3 roots 2 times the square root of x to the 10 times the square root of x to the 1. All right. Exactly. So this guy's already simplified. This guy I'm about to simplify. Yep. Yeah, x to the fifth, and then I have root, root. 2x, because you have that 2. That's like yeah, and that's it. Any questions on those? No? All right. Thank you very much for your patience today.